All right, where we left off, I was continuing to build assets, showing my creature shell breaking apart in these various components. I think I need a couple more. And I'm doing that just by doing internal compositing, cutting away from not really actually even cutting away, but selecting from what's already there, duplicating it, like so, and using that as a new component for reference. and adding a little bit of personality to it just because I get to make my own pixels finally. So giving it kind of a cartoony edge to make the animation a little bit more fun. As this old creature breaks away and the new one springs out of it. Because I'm using my own pixels, I can kind of create a false edge there as well. All good stuff. And now I need that base layer. The legs. So I'm going to put those on their own asset as well. and softly erase away from the base. See that, that glow that I put onto it, start to soften that with lower opacity erasers. And then I can draw on it, creating my own pixels. All right, so now I've got a lot of assets. These are all the shell pieces. I'm gonna mark those with a color because that will help identify them as I move them around for these following frames. I'm distorting them a little bit so they feel dimensional as they're getting blown off. And so this is where all of those compositing techniques come in. So let me select multiples. Using command, I can select multiples on different layers. These are all the internal composites. And then I'm going to mark them all with the color. Let's make it red. So now all these reds are the shells. Now, if I go back to my stage, I see where I last left off my animation on layer 13, which will be frame 13. And if I look at my storyboard sketch, In terms of keyframes and story, all that's remaining is the, the end three keyframes where the parts fall and fly away, a new character is introduced and it starts to grow. But that's going to take quite a few more than just three frames to, to show. So I get to build that with those assets now. First things first, rebuild the last asset. 
That's why we set it up this way. So I can re always go back to a frame that I finalized and make changes to it because I have all the assets here. So that is this. And this. There we go, those match. And then the creature inside. I believe I have this. Yep. Okay, so now I want that creature busting out a little bit. And I'm going to move them a little bit too. So let me duplicate it from the last one. And then puppet warp it. And these old skills. And just because I was showing the beak last time, I just want to move that a little bit. It'll be subtle, but it's enough. And because this leg is actually showing, let me kick out a little bit from side. Okay. So we'll go from this position now to this position. And as it's doing that, instead of these backgrounds, we are going to build them with the shells. So this is a lot of animated components. I'm going to auto select by layer. And I'm going to bring them in. Why is that not working? Oh, it's because it's doing the shadow underneath. And this is a good opportunity to start flickering that shadow again, because I've got some movement again. So I have to not auto select layer, otherwise we'll always do the overlay layer. And instead, just grab these as they are. So this is just the beginning of it breaking. So I'll set it up like that, set it up like that. I want it to feel like it's happening pretty fast, though. So I'm letting these changes be pretty abrupt. Set it up like that. And then the other side. So this was the benefit of setting up all of these assets ahead of time. Hello. And you see they're already layered, so they work right in with what I've already set up. I'm just going to rotate this one a little bit. So they just feel a little off. All right, so we go now pretty quickly from this, just opening up to fracturing like so. And we can play with some of our other features. We already played with the shadow. We can move the clouds like we've done each frame so far, very disciplined. And we can play with dimming down of the the overall cloudiness, which I feel like we, are, we I had already done. So, yeah. So I think that's a good frame. So how do we solidify that frame? We go to our topmost layer with an eyeball. We hold down Option, then Layer, Merge Visible, then Select All, then Command C to copy it, and then we paste it onto our stage. That's our next frame. And if there's something I want to change in that, like the little artifacts from cutting it out with the glow effect, I can easily do that. I deselect and delete that merged layer. I find the offending one, which is this. I can erase away from that edge. Oh. 
so it's not so strong. And then we merge it again. So option, layer, merge, visible. Select all. I would usually use Command A, but when I do that, it stops my recording. Command C to copy. Then I go to my stage file and Command V to paste it in. So now I've got a new one that's better than the one before, so I can delete that old one. So it goes from this to this. Pretty big change, but we want it to feel kind of dramatic, this breaking out. Next, I'm going to use Command D, deselect, delete that merge layer, and I'm going to use those same assets now, but a new creature. So let's play with the shadow a little bit, flicker it again. Let's put a new creature in there, growing a little bit this time. So I can grow it, I think, a little bit more than I have it. So from this to this, and then get to play with those assets again. Exploding them out. Maybe rotating them. That's why animation's a pain. There's lots of little, little details. If I want the explosion to look pretty powerful, I want to move them quite a bit and rotate them quite a bit. And I can distort them, squish them as they move. This is the most asset heavy part of my animation for sure. And then the other side, that's why I marked them with red so they're easy to find. I might even want to start tipping the bottom structure here of that shell because it's going to fall away and then I think maybe fade away. Holding down shift allows me to distort these all with that command T3 transform. Now if I want something more extreme, I can always right click. And it's kind of nice as they explode away for me to make them a little bit smaller as well, less noticeable. Because I want the viewer not paying attention to these, I want them paying attention to the creature emerging. That's why I like to keep GIFs pretty cartoonish. So the visual impact is strong in each panel. Okay, so it goes from this to this. I want to move the clouds. And then I want to continue to decrease that atmosphere. It's a little clearer. All right. How do we merge it? We hold down Option from the topmost visible layer. We say Layer Merge Visible while holding down Option. Select it all. Command C to copy it all and then paste that onto, on top of our last layer in our stage. All right. Good time to save it.